Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage, I'm Bart, and today in this video, we'll be showing you how to install the new TST Industries integrated taillight and fender eliminator kit on a 2021 and up Honda CRF 300L. Now we've already rolled out with a fender eliminator, like a basic kit for this bike that takes off the fender and enables you to remount your license plate on the bike without any fuss. It is a nice adjustable kit, all CNC machined aluminum, black anodized, really superb quality. But I know a lot of you guys really don't like the outdated look of that taillight unit that comes on this bike from the OEM. So we had to step in and roll out with this new integrated taillight. And I figured if we're changing the shape of the taillight and we're making the shape of the tail nice and sleek and sexy and sporty for you, we might as well do away with the original fender eliminator kit and integrate the fender eliminator into this taillight. So we did just that. Our license plate bracket mounts to this taillight unit and will mount nicely back behind here, allow you to remove the fender off the bike and keep that nice set of lines converging to a nice tight tail in the back. Now, when you opt for an integrated tail light that has signals integrated onto the LED board in the tail light itself, you can do away with the OEM signals. Now, you don't have to. If you wanna retain your OEM signals, that is totally fine. You can pick up a set of these Y splitters that we sell as a kit of two. These are available on our website, tstindustries.com. You can retain this and split it into two outputs. So essentially you plug this in and it gives you two outputs and you can hook up your OEM signal back into that. If that is not your cup of tea and you're gonna be eliminating signals altogether and just using the signals on board, then we recommend picking up a set of these blockout kits this is a pre-assembled setup that I made to show you what it looks like off the bike. It essentially fills in the hole left behind by the signal removal. It comes as a set of components that builds on the bike into this look. If you prefer to have the integrated taillight function, the signals in the taillight and run aftermarket signals, no worries. We've pre-wired pigtails that accept 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. That just happens to be the termination of choice on all of our TST Industries signaling systems. So if you pick up one of our signal sets to use in conjunction with the taillight, you can just plug them right into these guys and no fuss there. The only caveat here would be we have eight millimeter studs on these signals and the removal of your OEM signal renders a large hole on the bike itself. So you would need to pick up a set of these pod signal mounting components. They look like this. This mounts to the outside. There are inner plates and this nut and the stud here captures that onto the bike. You can run any combination of these components. Just know that when you go away from using the incandescent signals that the OEM provides and going to LED, you're gonna drop the amount of current that's drawn from the signaling system and the OEM signal relay will likely act wonky. You'll either get really fast flash rate or no flash rate at all, or perhaps it'll just stay on. So to combat that, we recommend using our Gen 2 LED flasher relay. That is a plug and play component. Unplug the OEM, plug this one in. I'll actually show you how to do that in this video. We do have a separate video showing you that. Start to finish, we show you how to adjust the flash rate should you choose to do so. But in this video, I'll just show you how to put it in. It is an optional component. If you've already done it, you don't have to purchase another one, no big deal. We do have the option for you guys to pick up either a clear or smoked version. The brightness output is very similar, the clear being just a tiny bit uh, brighter. We don't attenuate too much of the output from the smoked version because we've chosen to do very, very light amount of tint in the lens and the output of the LEDs is virtually the same between the two. So if you have them side by side, you may notice just a tinge more output from the clear, but the smoke is still providing ample brightness. So for this particular installation, I'm gonna to choose to do the smoke. I like the way that looks on the bike with all the black accents on the bike. This will go with it very nicely. The rest of these components are just hardware components that enable mounting onto the bike, uh, mounting of the license plate bracket onto the tail light unit. And then also we provide a closeout that closes out 
the hole left behind by the fender underneath. I'll show you how to do that all in the steps I'm about to portray. Uh, one more thing before we start wrenching, I do have a license plate light here. This is an optional unit. Not everybody wants to run one. They're not required in every jurisdiction. It's up to you to make sure that your ride is legal. So make sure before you purchase, you check that out. If you need one of these, drop that into your cart and check out with it. In this video, I will show you how to route it and connect it, but just know this is an optional kit. If you want to include it, you have to actually drop it in your cart. All right, I'm done yapping. As you can probably tell, I'm really amped to show you guys how to install this and what it looks like afterwards. So let's get going. In step one, we'll be removing the license plate off the bike. We will also be keeping the hardware. The hardware will be reused on the new TST Industries kit. For some reason, your bike doesn't have license plate holding hardware. You pick that up on our website, tstindustries.com. Next, we will be removing these fasteners here, here, and on matching locations on the opposite side of the bike. This requires a six millimeter Allen. Crack them loose and then take them out. Now these do have shoulder washers in them. You take it out, make sure the shoulder washer comes off with the fastener. The black one goes in the rear and the shiny one goes in the front location. Now notice, shiny one is deeper on the shoulder than the black one. So in the reverse order of disassembly, when we're bringing this bike back together, please remember that. Now the seat comes off. We're gonna pull it towards the rear and in a swooping upward motion, that'll clear this locking mechanism and this locking mechanism. The seat goes away and now we will take off the tail section here. To make that happen, we have to take this panel and the opposite panel and push it outwards away from the center plane of the bike. That clears this peg feature from a rubber grommet on each one of these and it'll free your tail section. Tail section rotates up. We spread these two to clear the pegs from the windows. And now we have access to all this stuff here. Let's get in under this boot, forward it a little bit. That exposes all of our connections and makes our life easy. Let's unplug these connectors first. These are the signals, positive, negative, on this one, you pry up on the locking feature here, pry up on that, and that releases this guy. On these, you press the unlock tab here, and that will release the male plug. Repeat the procedure on the other side signal. Signals are free. Our license plate light wire comes in through this window from the fender, hooks up here. This connector has a press tab here that will release it just like that. And lastly, our tail light also has a press tab. What you see here actually is a sub harness that we have for our brake light modulator. Typically, if your bike is stock, what you'll see is your tail light connected straight to the harness like this. We just already installed our brake light modulator. It works on the OEM tail light or on the tail light we're about to install now. So we're gonna keep it in place. If you guys are interested in just the installation of the brake light modulator, we did shoot a separate video. It is available on our website. All right, now we have all these wiring pairs free. This guy's free. I'm gonna take out these two 10 millimeter head fasteners. Then we're gonna take the tail light off the bike. Now, there is a rubber grommet down here with a peg feature from the tail light interfacing with it. So we're gonna have to pull this back in order to clear that. That comes off, no issue there. We are also going to pull out the grommet that tail light was fitting into here. I'm just gonna keep it on my tail light. All right. Next, let's get these wire pairs out from 
how they're routed through the frame, and we're gonna focus on removing the signals now. So I wanna note here before we move forward, if you guys are keeping these signals, then this step is redundant to you. I would just skip it. If you are removing them, the next steps will show you how to do that. These particular signals have a Phillips head screw here that needs to be taken out. Once that is removed, there is a metal piece from the inside that jams this whole system together. That needs to be removed. And then subsequently there is a plastic jamming piece that it all interfaces with that also has to be removed. And then this comes off. We can just pry out the boot. And this is what this whole system looks like. Let me quickly illustrate this for you guys off the bike so everybody knows what's happening here. Screw comes off. Then this piece made of steel comes off. It releases the plastic piece that jams this whole rubber boot from the inside. And then we could strip this off the bike. Repeat the procedure on this side of the bike. In preparation for this next step, we're going to grab a couple components from our TST kit. Here you see our black shoulder washer made of nylon. We're gonna grab this part and also the closeout plate for this area here. We are going to be reusing all the fasteners that we drop in the next step. So let's do that now. I'm gonna grab a five millimeter Allen, crack these guys loose. I'm gonna support this fender. Make sure it doesn't just drop off. All right, so now we have these three fasteners. I'm gonna line up the closeout plate. You can see on the longer edges, we have the screw closer to one edge than the other. We wanna position the one that is closer towards the rear of the bike. Bikes do vibrate quite a bit, so if you guys wanna make sure that these fasteners are secure, I would suggest using a little bit of medium strength thread locking compound on them, or you can also torque them to proper spec. 8.8 .8 foot pounds is the right spec for that. The remaining fastener will have the shoulder washer with the small diameter pointing up and that will go in this location. We will bottom this out. And as you can see, when you bottom it, it still leaves a little bit of play. We're gonna come back to this location after our taillight module is installed and we are going to torque this in, in a way that it mushrooms the nylon material and makes contact with this suspending it nicely and making it secure and also preloading this fastener, making sure that it doesn't vibrate loose. And next up, we will be pre-configuring the license plate bracket onto our tail light assembly. We'll be making use of the innermost holes on the bracket. We are going to fasten this onto the tail light unit using the two countersunk screws through the outside. Pair that with the small M5 lock nuts that have a flange on them. We provide two sets of these, one for each side. And the tools of choice for this fastener pair will be a three millimeter Allen from the outside, along with an eight millimeter box or open-ended wrench from the inside, you can also use a socket. Tighten this down to bottom out. I'm gonna look at the screw against the face, the inner face of this nut. Make sure that the threads are actually all the way flush here. Do not over tighten this connection. You can damage the plastic casing of the enclosure for the tail light. 
just want to get it snug and that's about it. I've already unraveled the harness here. As you can see we have an OEM connection for the main tail light connection, OEM connections for our signals, and then the provided pigtails for aftermarket signals should you choose to run them. If you're not gonna run these, if you're not gonna attach any aftermarket signals to these pigtails, you will need to do something to make sure that these caps do not slide off, exposing the conductor, possibly touching ground and blowing a fuse. So if you aren't using signals, at this point, this is the, probably the most opportune moment to get some electrical tape and tape these off in a way that they will not touch. So our option one installation I will be portraying is signals being only in the taillight, the integrated version of the signals that come on the taillight. Subsequent versions of the install that I will show you will make use of OEM signals and then aftermarket signals in conjunction with the signals that are on board here. So what I'm doing right now is just using some electrical tape to make sure that the insulating cap is not able to slide up and down the wire. And then what I'm gonna do is bend the wire over backwards. I'm bending over the green and brown wires and I'm letting the black stick out. The black is ground. We don't want them anywhere near the positive wires that I just taped off. And then finally going over all of the cap to make sure they're completely locked down. And now I can bend these guys back over this, make a nice neat package. Now these are adequately insulated and isolated physically in place. They will not pose a problem. So we could actually put the wiring right in the area where we unplugged all of the OEM connections and go on to the physical installation of our taillight system onto the bike here. We do have a tab in feature that goes into an interference window inside this shroud here. And that will lock down the bottom, prevent it from rotating or translating forward and aft. Now these holes come into alignment and we we'll grab the hardware and get those fastened. So now up top here, we will need to insert the hardware that will hold this unit into the frame. One of the washers that came with the kit, the larger screw. We'll get that screw started. Do the other side. Now I'll grab a four millimeter Allen key and get these screws to protrude past the nuts that are welded into the frame. And here we're gonna do something a little bit unorthodox. We're gonna use a lock nut underneath this connection. This is because typically on a bike like this, we experience a lot of road vibration and all the components, and there is a chance, there's a risk, that these screws can vibrate out. So one way of mitigating that is to use a thread locking agent, but since this is ABS plastic, um, many thread locking agents out there have nasty chemicals that degrade the plastic and render the plastic broken. So we don't wanna do that. We're gonna use a lock nut from underneath. And the way to do that, will be to grab a 10 millimeter wrench and get that nut underneath this screw. Get that thread started. I'm gonna use the reverse orientation of the wrench. It'll be more ergonomic. All right. And the way we want to situate this is Kind of like a jam nut, like we use <clears throat> on uh, chain adjusters. We will back the nut up against the surface of the nut that is welded into the frame. 
and then give it a little tighten, jam it against the frame, and that'll be that. You don't have to make it too, too tight. It's just a matter of clamping this ear piece from the taillight enclosure to the frame without overstressing it and then locking down on this screw connection with the lock nut. I'm gonna repeat the procedure on this side. And that's it on that. All right, so now, if you are running a license plate light, this is the best time to run it through. On the outside of the tail light unit, there is a small hole here that will enable you to pass the wire through. That's what I'm gonna be making use of to go from the outside to the inside here. All right, this is a rather long wire. Our license plate light wiring from the harness is right here. We don't need quite this long of a wire, but I also don't wanna to have to chop it and then strip it again. So what I'm gonna do is use the same tie method that the license plate light came with. I'm just gonna tie it up so that I don't have all this extra excess hanging around inside and rattling. Now this is ready to make the connection. We will be making use of the two PosiTap connectors that come with the license plate light. Since we are handling the license plate light right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make that connection now and connect all the other parts in a little bit later. I have some of this wire exposed. I've already done several installations on this bike and that's why I have a little extra here. Typically they're covered up to here and just slice back on these to expose the wire. I'm gonna grab the larger diameter cap from the connector, unscrew it, expose the slit that you pass the wire that you're connecting into through. Get the rest of that connector seated down. There's a small piercing element protruding from, from this side of the cap that makes that connection. Repeat the procedure on the other wire. On this particular bike, the green wire is the ground and the black wire is the positive. We're gonna connect it, connect the license plate light in, into the wiring in that scheme and then test it, make sure that we got it right. Now that these are seated down, as you can see, I staggered them so they don't bulk up too much. I'm gonna remove the small cap. Now, this is very cumbersome to handle. I like to remove it, hold it tightly, if you lose this, this whole connector is kind of useless, so be careful. We'll get the stripped wire through from the grip portion towards the threaded portion and get that seated in here and tighten it down. If you've done this properly, you give it a little tug, should be good to go. Repeat the procedure on the other side. All right, test it quickly. Make sure we have light, and in fact, we do. So we're good here. I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting all this stuff in here. Uh, I mentioned during the fender removal and disassembly that we have one of our TST Industries brake light modulators here. This is a uh, plug through component. Typically, when you just unplug the tail light, you would just reconnect this tail light into here. If you've opted to purchase the brake light modulator also, it's just the same thing. Plug into plug into plug. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Just note, during the demonstration of the actual function, we will actually have flashing brake instead of solid brake, whereas if you do not run the brake light modulator, it'll just be solid brake. All right. On the OEM signaling, we have two connectors for each lamp. The white one is ground, the orange and blue are positive. So we are going to go into these. 
let's connect one and see. Okay, so I've just reversed it. Brown goes into blue, B2B. Green goes into orange. Let's test that out. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but we're flashing a little bit faster than the OEM rate. We do have front signals being LED type and the rear being LED type. Some people may not be bothered by this. Uh, electrically, nothing will be damaged. Your signaling system is just flashing just a tad bit faster if you do want to combat that. As I said in my intro, we do have our Gen 2 flasher relay. This plugs in. Let's actually do that now because it's so simple on this bike. You just pull the OEM relay off of its keeper on the frame, strip off the boot, press down on the lock, withdraw it, plug in our relay, replace the boot, and then replace the relay onto the keeper on the frame. If you wanna know how to adjust the flash rate on the relay beyond the 85 cycles per minute that it comes with, then you'll need to watch our flasher relay installation video that we have for this bike. All right, now we have a proper 85 cycle per minute flash rate. Looks a little bit calmer. But like I said, electrically, it'll be fine no matter what flash rate you got on there. It's just, uh, you may confuse people if you're flashing too fast. All right, so this is essentially done. I'm going to get as many of these connectors into the boot as possible. This boot will protect against grime entry and things like that. The rest of my connectors, the, the rest of the connectors from TST Industries are pretty much uh, all sealed type connectors, so no worries there. From this point forward, we go proceed with the reverse order of disassembly of the body parts, but in this option one, where we didn't use external signals, I would typically do something to block out these giant holes here. So for that purpose, we have our block off kit. You basically stack the components like so, anodized washer in a color of your choice. These are red, those are the ones I chose for this bike, but we do have them available in different colors. So anodized washer, screw, one of these domed spacers. We do send two different versions. So the one that looks symmetric about this axis goes on the outside. The one that's got a little bit more asymmetry goes from the inside. Now, notice the bubble goes in here. The bubble also goes inboard. Screw and washer. And then on the other side, from the inside, we have large washer and our nut. The tool choice for this fastener pair is eight millimeter box wrench and a three millimeter Allen. I'm gonna repeat the procedure on this side without commentary. We do still have to remember to mushroom that shoulder washer here. Showed you guys that component in a previous step. We're basically just going until it mushrooms enough to capture this entire tail component. At this point, we start replacing our components. So for option two and three of the installation type that I mentioned where we use different signals, I will have an appendix chunk after this video because most people will likely purchase this set, but I wanna enable you to have success in the installation of the other options. Um, so that step will be portrayed after the whole flow. All right, so I've just replaced the tail, made sure that the tabs go on the outside of the frame, inside of the undertail. That looks good. I'm gonna snap the side fairings back in. Get my seat. Make sure that I tab this in 
to its receiving geometry, get these hooks under this, and then get these eyes in between the frame and the tail and concentric with the holes there. And now we're gonna replace the fasteners that hold these components together. I just wanna note that when you do this, I recommend being very careful that the actual shoulders on these washers, on the spacers, are concentric with all of the components so that you don't clamp down on any of the plastic components and squish them, deform them perma permanently. So I do this by hand until I have metal and metal contact. And that's pretty much it up here. The last remaining step will be to mount the license plate onto the bike. As you can see here, you're using a license plate light there is a red strip here if you peel back on this strip that exposes a two side adhesive that is of permanent nature you can use that i typically don't utilize these things the way we've designed this setup is the license plate light is very captive in there it's got nowhere to go so you don't have to worry about that really choice is yours but i'll just leave it unstuck all right so for the actual installation of the license plate, we will either use whatever came with the bike or if you don't have fasteners, you can pick up a set of these reflective or these anodized uh, hardware sets for the license plate from our store. I like to have matching hardware. This matches this and it looks very nicely with all the red on the bike. So I'm gonna make use of our anodized license plate hardware kits and for this fastener set we'll use the same tools as for these guys eight millimeter on the back and three millimeter allen on the outside get these close to bottom but leave a little bit of adjustability i'm going to adjust how my license plate is sitting after it's already all together. All right, so I'm gonna get it center, push it up as high as I can because I like it as tucked as it can possibly be. And now I'm gonna tighten down all the way. All right, that's it. Let's give it one more test. License plate light on, running light on. Brake functioning, right signal, left signal, all systems go. Takes me about 15 minutes to make this installation. I don't have to yap so much. And wow, I really like the difference it makes on the bike. The OEM tail light just doesn't do this justice. With this setup, you have this convergence of sexy sporty lines and your license plate hangs out right here. You have a place to mount it should you choose to do so. If you're just trail riding, you just forego the elements that hang the license plate and still have that tail light to let your buddy know you are braking so you don't get smushed. Um, we've had our guys road test this wearing white t-shirts and uh, there's not a lot of grime that comes over the top uh, from the bottom here. This setup seems to catch most of it. I think Mark ran around in a white t-shirt for an entire day and he just got dusty. He didn't really get much on him. So, you know, that's to be considered when ditching a fender, the OEM fender hangs down to here. It will keep more stuff off you than this setup, but I think this is pretty adequate and it's sleek and sexy and really modifies the bike into the proper look that we all like. If you like what you see here, check out tstindustries.com. We have these parts ready to go for you. We also have a whole host of other parts for this bike and other bikes you may have in your stable. So thanks for watching. Click subscribe, thumbs up, whatever you guys do. Drop me a comment. I like to hear what you guys think. All right, we'll talk to you later. Peace.
appendix junk here, I will be explaining some of the insulation nuances that I mentioned in my original flow in the video. This is the option two I mentioned, where we have the integrated taillight function plugged into the harness and also using external signals for this chunk. For this section, we will use the OEM signals. So what I'm saying is you can use the integrated signals in here in the capsule along with the OEM signals. And this is how you do it. You see here, I still have the left signal retained in the original disassembly of the bike for this installation. You would just leave your signals installed during the installation process. After you've connected everything here, you would have to connect these connectors into the harness. For this installation, you will need to purchase our Y splitters for Honda. And what we'll do is unplug the signal from the taillight going into the harness for this particular side, plug in our Y splitter. And what this does is splits into two outputs here. We connect the taillight into one of them. And then we will connect the colored plug into the other, colored meaning orange for one side, blue for the other side. We still have to connect the separate ground from the OEM signal into its grounding. For some reason, Honda decided not to populate the second pin in this connector and split the ground to a separate connector. Don't really know the reasoning behind that, but this is the scheme that we need to follow. So now we will test. There we go. We have signal coming out of the actual signal lamp and also the tail light. If you prefer to retain signaling function only in your signal lamps and not in the tail light, then you would forgo the Y splitter and just leave your signals connected as is and add the tail light without connecting the tail light signal plug into anything. You simply leave this, this guy disconnected. And in this mode, you have only brake and running light function in the tail light, and all your signaling is done by your external signal lamp. All right, I'm gonna take this off, return it to how I had it before, and I will show the third type of installation I mentioned in my flow, which is adding aftermarket signals to this bike. Here I'm holding our BL6 signals. These are our most popular signal. We have several different types of LED uh, pod signal uh, types that you can mount on these bikes. We will be using this one because most people decide on this particular model. I'm gonna show you the physical installation first and then the wiring. So for this installation, we will not, not need any wiring converters because we have terminated some of the wires coming out of the tail light into the actual bullet connectors, the, the mating connectors for the bullet males here. So my original installation flow, I did tape these guys out, but if you are actually mounting external signals to the system, you will forgo that step and leave them hanging. Just make sure that during tests along the way, you have the caps over these connectors so that nothing shorts. So like I was saying, we have female bullets on the tail light loom and male bullets on our signals. So if you are using external signals of aftermarket nature and you bought them from us, these are just gonna be plug and play, no worries there. All right, so the physical installation will go as follows. You will need to purchase the signals and also the appropriate pot signal adapter kit. This is just a means of closing out this hole and converting it to this size hole so that you can actually mount your signals to the bodywork. This particular bike's adapter kit consists of these six parts. Uh, there are round washers in there that we will not be using. So essentially we are using only four of the parts, two on each side, the teardrop adapter 
goes on the outside against the bodywork, and then we have this ovalized component that goes on the inside. I've already taken off the washers and the nut off the stud here, so I'm gonna feed my wiring through the teardrop adapter, get this through the bodywork, get our ovalized guy on, and then split washer that came off this signal just a couple steps before. Flat washer and the nut. And now we're gonna align all of this properly inside here and start engaging the thread. Important note here, I have seen people damage these signals by holding the nut inside static and then turning the signal lamp over and over and over. And that is the lazy way of actually attaching this signal. It'll get your installation done physically, but you are very likely to twist these wires around inside the stud and actually tear them off the circuit board that's in there. So you really wanna hold this lamp on the outside in the configuration you wanna keep it in, and then use a 12 millimeter open-ended wrench to do the tightening. Tearing off the wires from the circuit board during installation is not covered by warranty. That is damage caused by improper installation. So please be patient and do this properly. Now you can keep on turning this nut into the stud till you will likely rip out the metal portion of the stud out of the rubber. We don't wanna do that. What we're gonna do instead is tighten down until we've preloaded this connection enough so that it doesn't slide around with physical force applied. You just wanna preload the rubber so that it acts as a spring and puts enough friction on the threads so that it doesn't back out. If it were ever to back out, it'll still stay together for you, so no worries there. It'll just dangle off, you see it, and you can just retighten it properly. And that's it. All right, let's find the appropriate connection for our signal. Black will go to black. That is ground on our color scheme. Get these guys pressed together until you feel a snap. And as you can see, this insulating cap does slide around. So after making our connection, we will lock down the insulating caps with electrical tape. And since we are on the right side here, I think we will be making use of the brown wire, making sure that all of these are insulated and not touching any other conductor or metal. I'm gonna power this up and test it. Here we go. We have signal light coming out of the external signal and our tail light. We're good there. Obviously, since we are showing you this in conjunction with the OEM setup, we're doing one side, you would do the same procedure on this side and then plug in to the other side connectors. I'm gonna skip that step, just show you what to do to have success at keeping these insulated. These guys like to slide off, so we're just gonna lock them down. That's all there is to it. I like to make sure that I start with the positive wire so not black. This is the more important one to keep insulated. Get that guy situated first. Confirm that it is completely isolated, insulated, and nothing sliding around. Get the other side locked, and then final pass of tightly wound electrical tape will do, will finalize this for us. Nice and neat, ready to go. Whatever your situation is, finalize the other side. Same steps for reassembly as I showed in the main flow. All right, that's pretty much it.